Will ChatGPT replace software developers? I guess this is a fair concern. So if you want to know how to get ahead of ChatGPT and AI in general and what you need to do, stick to this video because I am about to answer these questions. Software development is a complex and time-consuming task. It requires countless hours of testing, writing code, debugging and refinement before the end product is ready. But now there's a revolutionary technology called ChatGPT. ChatGPT uses natural language processing to understand your instructions and create code with minimal effort. And I mean a lot of code. And unlike software developers, it can effortlessly write code in HTML. It can also write Python, C Sharp, Java, and really any other programming language. Therefore, it comes natural to ask ourselves, is ChatGPT a threat to us software developers? Will it replace software developers at all? And a lot of people have tried to answer these questions, but I think answers till now were mostly emotional. A first emotional reaction is to activate the panic monster and well, just panic. Main points here are that ChatGPT can and will in fact write better and faster code. Yeah, right now ChatGPT has a large margin for error, but in one or two years that margin will kind of like decrease. But is this really the case? A second category of answers that I still consider emotional is to minimize the impact of ChatGPT. Influencers on this bandwagon usually say that ChatGPT is just a tool, like Stack Overflow for instance, or like the IDEs. It just helps us to write code faster and better, and therefore it's really our best friend. I think we need to be realistic and acknowledge that ChatGPT will drastically change the way software development works. Software developers that embrace this change and adapt to it will be able to stay ahead of the change and remain valuable on the job market. Any industrial revolution came with a huge shift in the way people work. Let's just imagine how factories looked like way back when most of the labor was done manually. Technological advancements have automated a lot of the manual labor and nowadays factories usually use a bunch of different robots to achieve better and faster results. So while the number of factory workers decreased, the services sector started to blossom. It's true, software development is not a manual labor, but it's also true that the AI revolution will automate non-manual tasks and ChatGPT proves that. That's why we need to be very smart and try to understand which parts of the software developers work can be easily automated by AI and which not. A good way to get this understanding is to put ChatGPT at work and see what it can actually really do. Let's give ChatGPT the task to create me a homepage for a blogging platform by giving it some information about what I want to achieve. As you can see, ChatGPT starts to write down some HTML here and it does this at an unbelievable pace. It uses, it uses semantic tags, it creates a navigation bar, then the main, then the section. So it's just wow, it does the job really, really, really fast. Probably it would take me just I mean, maybe an hour or something like this to really be able to write everything that ChatGPT writes here right now. And it writes, it writes until it actually gets to the end. Of course, now it uses lorem ipsum text because I haven't provided it that input about what text exactly that needs to be there. But once again, the entire HTML structure of my blogging platform is almost set up right now by ChatGPT. Now let's give ChatGPT the task to create a CSS for this page that we have just created. And I want to it to look like medium. So we see that it also starts to write me some CSS. It's literally crazy. So it just scripts out well-organized CSS at once again, an unbelievable, unbelievable pace. So we see that for, we have here different types of selectors uh, through elements and also the links, the main here, it's kind of like, well, everything that it needs to be there. It just writes out CSS. Now it has probably stopped because we have reached the limit of the output that actually ChatGPT is able to write in one single request. But I guess you already get this whole idea. So you see that 
basically what I have achieved here is I have almost a functional, I would say, homepage for a blogging platform and I have then the basic CSS that I need to make it look like the Medium blogging platform, which is once again crazy. It would probably take me maybe two hours to play around with all the CSS to make it look like Medium or something similar to that because it's true, I'm not really good at CSS, so there are people that might do it way quicker, but still ChatGPT kind of like does the job. It seems that when it comes to HTML and CSS, ChatGPT does a very good job. Sure, it still needs improvements, but it will take probably less than two years to get where it needs to be. So a first software development task that will be probably automated through AI is the UI stuff. Unfortunately, there are a lot of so-called gurus out there that trick you into believing that if you know HTML and CSS, you are covered for the rest of your life. No you are definitely not. Within two years, designers will be able to simply feed Photoshop files to AI and the AI will generate the entire HTML and CSS for their design. So that's really a very first task that AI will be able to automate within the software development. Let's move on and see how ChatGPT deals with data structures and algorithms. This time, let's ask ChatGPT to write me some C++ code that traverses a graph in an optimal way. And I want to point out a few things. So I'm not really familiar with C++ and there's a reason why I have chosen kind of like this language for ChatGPT to write me this algorithm. And we see that ChatGPT just starts to write an algorithm. And here we see that it, well, this function traverses the graph uh, using the bread first algorithm. So it's bread first. So it implicitly choose this bread first algorithm as being the way or the optimal way to traverse a graph. Now, of course, there is a lot of theory behind that. And there is also the depth first algorithm that some may say it's faster. However, there are some ways to optimize different algorithms. Also taking advantage of different features that, that we have there to kind of like interact with the CPU. And it might be that in some cases using this bread first algorithm is actually faster. So the thing is that if I would have needed to write this code, like once again, I'm not really familiar with C++ and I'm definitely not very good at data structures and algorithms since it is not something that I do day by day. So if somebody would give me the task to kind of like write this graph traverser algorithm in C++, it would take me probably even a day to actually do that. However, ChatGPT did this just in a matter of seconds. That's some food for thought for sure. It means that when it comes to algorithms, in the very near future, ChatGPT will be able to determine which exact algorithm and which exact programming language to choose in a given scenario to yield the best results. So it simply eliminates the boundary of technology and I dare to say that developers which have a main focus on writing algorithms will have some tough challenges coming from ChatGPT and AI in general in the years to come. Now let's give a more practical task to ChatGPT and I want, wanted to create me some ASP.NET Core full CRUD controller and I specify here some information I want it to be for the product, I want to use mediator to send command and queries and so on and so forth. And ChatGPT just starts writing. So here's my controller class, the product controller, it injects the mediator. So it does really exactly everything that I would do probably in an application to actually get started with this certain controller because that's actually the starting point basically for really each type of application or each type of things that you might want to do in your day-to-day -day work as .NET developers, for instance. And here it right now starts to actually write me the product class. It kind of like gives me some basic properties like the ID, name, description, and price. Of course, I could specify some more things and it would add more properties. And the, here is the get all products query. So it implements basically the query and now it actually stopped because that's probably the character limit that it reached uh, that's possible within a response. This is a very common task. And I am very familiar with what it needs to be done, but still it would take me some good minutes to write everything down. ChatGPT does this in seconds, so that's a very nice thing. This is the perfect example where ChatGPT can be my friend and help me to be more productive. Well, yes, but 
When we're working in teams, these type of tasks are usually done by less experienced developers to get their hands dirty, to understand the concept, and so on and so forth. So therefore, in this case, ChatGPT doesn't really help me to be more productive. Instead, it completely takes over a junior developer's task. The key learning point here is that software development roles will drastically change and the usual way developers used to get into the industry will not work the same anymore. So what can we do about that? Well, here are some things that we can do as developers proactively to make sure that we are still ahead of ChatGPT and AI. The answer seems very simple. Try to sharpen your skills that can't be easily automated by AI. In practice, this would mean quite a few things. One, focus on understanding systems, not on frameworks and programming language internals. Understanding systems, however, fosters creativity. As engineers, we almost never build just a single application. We build apps that are usually part of a wider system. We need to understand how all the coggled wheels of those systems work. We need to focus on understanding pros and cons of each programming pattern, software architecture type, or tools that we are using. Making decisions in such scenarios needs creativity and critical thinking, and that's not something an AI will be able to do within the next five years at least. Two, since AI will gain more and more traction, data science and data engineering will become more and more popular and important. So it's time to learn some Python and dig into these fields. This will acquire you some skills that will be valuable in the job market for the foreseeable future. Three, invest in expanding your soft skills. Teamwork, collaboration, efficient communication with your team, with your stakeholders is something that's widely underestimated by software engineers. Still, these are some valuable skills that AI won't be able to automate in the near future. Four, be seen. Software engineering is not only about skill, it's also about influence. If you want to increase your value in the job market for the future, companies need to hear about you. They need to see you. So start working a lot on side projects, contribute to open source projects, write blogs, create content, whatever. Do anything possible to increase your influence in the software engineering industry. That's kind of it. I'm pretty sure that if you stick to these four principles, you will be fairly safe at least for the next five or 10 years. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Code Wrinkles channel if you didn't do that already, so that you are always up to date with everything that happens new here on the channel. And if you think that there might be other developers uh, or people that might find this content in interesting, don't be shy and share it with them and they will be probably thankful. If you have any questions and if you want to get discussion started, don't be shy and just use the comment section below and let me know what you think about this video or if you have any questions and I will be more than happy to actually get a discussion going with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.